Fragile. It must be Italian. Thomas here with Much Profs, gonna give you another how-to video. Today I am once again carrying on the Christmas-themed movie builds as I work my way to Christmas, which is just around the corner, and I've only got one left, which is today's. So I thought I would draw inspiration from my two favorite Christmas movies of all time. I watch these every year, often multiple times, and they never seem to get old to me for some reason. They hit that nostalgia point every single time. That is a Christmas story and a nightmare before Christmas. And I thought, why not combine the two? Now, this is not a new concept that I am coming up with. I have seen lots of people do this before, but I thought I would take a stab at it. In a Christmas story, the dad gets this prize. Uh, it is a major award that he gets for like solving a crossword puzzle. And it is a leg lamp. And in Nightmare Before Christmas, there is Sally. See where I'm going. I would like to turn the major award into Sally's leg from A Nightmare Before Christmas out of a couple things that I bought from the store. So without further ado, today we are going to make Sally's major award leg lamp out of a bunch of random stuff. Let's get to building. So instead of trying to build all these things from scratch and with Christmas sneaking up really quick, I decided to buy a majority of the items for this build. Altogether, I probably spent around $100, $150. I will try and link parts to help any of you out who wanna try and build this on your own. A majority of the items I bought at my local home improvement store, the Sally dress was the only thing I purchased this year from the after Halloween sales. I got it at like 75% off. The leg is hollow and with a big hole at the top I need to fill it so that I can attach the lamp to it later so I cut out a piece of scrap lumber to cap it off. This is Warbla. It's a thermal plastic with wood dust mixed into it. I'm going to use it to make the high heel and the sock for my Sally foot. You heat the material up to about 195 degrees Fahrenheit and it becomes pliable. Then you can mold and shape it like clay. Once it cools, you have a rigid material that can be reheated, reshaped, and sanded at any point. I shape the heel first, then cover the foot with a layer of it and mold a large sock over the top of that. Looking at the 3D model of Sally on Sketchfab, I draw in the rough lines of where I want the stitches to go. I wanted to carve a groove into the plastic and decided that burning it in with a wood burner will probably be the cleanest result. Burning plastic isn't exactly the best practice, so make sure to wear a respirator and work in a well-ventilated area.
My lamp base is actually a pre-cut round that is sold as a table topper. This will add stability to the lamp. I need to drill out a hole for the center of the wood and I don't want to mark up the surface. So I lay down a piece of masking tape to draw my mark on. This hole will need to line up with the hole that I drilled on the bottom of the foot so that I can run the lamp cord through the middle and under the base. Now a smart person would say, hey Thomas, you could use puff paint or a number of other things to make the stitches with, and they would be right. But you know what looks like real stitches? Actual needle and thread stitches. Sure it'll be more difficult to thread, especially since my hands are ginormous and I can only make it down about mid-thigh. Future Thomas will figure this out later. Present Thomas is drilling holes now. Once drilled out a quick hit with a blowtorch will rid the surface of the little stringy bits left over from the drilling. A mix of blue for her leg, a white sock, and a black heel with a spray paint base coat. The cord will run through the center of the lamp and run out the back. I need to route her a channel in the bottom so that the lamp will sit flush with a table or a surface. I just map out the groove, put a routing bit on my rotary tool, and carve it out. Once I get the depth I need, I clean up the edges with a hobby knife and sand it close to even with a sanding stick. You could also put feet on the bottom of the lamp and achieve a similar outcome if you don't want to do the routing thing. I didn't show this in the video, but once all of this is done, I'm probably going to cover the bottom with some foam or felt to cover up the cord in the drill channel. With my Sally leg outside drying, I went ahead and moved on to coating the base in a stain and poly coat. This black stain by Minwax has it all in one, which saves me a step or two, so that's what I'm going with. You paint on one coat, let it sit for six hours, lightly sand it, then put on a second coat. I only went with one coat as I like the way the wood grain kind of showed through in bits, and that's what I went with.
to make my seam lines stand out better, I put down some acrylic paint in the recesses. I also went ahead and painted the stripes on her sock while I was at it. Now time to try and stitch up her leg with waxed leather threading. I got this awesome leather kit for my sister-in-law last year for Christmas, thanks Chrissy. I find the biggest needle that I can fit in the hole that I drilled and begin the painstaking task of trying to poke it through. I'm really glad I cut the opening for some leaves to poke out of later as it gives me access to run the needle through with a pair of pliers. I really like how the stitches turn out, but they were a pain to try and thread. I went to the hobby store to find some fake dead leaves, and of course, being this time of year, they only sell nice pretty green vines. So I sporadically sprayed my vine with brown, orange, red, and black spray paint. I just cut off a few in the various colors and try to super glue them into the hold near my ankle. Dr. Finkelstein in the movie stuffed Sally with dead leaves to fill her body out. In various parts of the movie, her limbs fall off and she just stuffs the leaves back in and so herself back up. I thought this was a fun little detail to add to the finished piece. Initially I tried to super glue it and couldn't get good adhesion so I switched over to hot glue to secure it in place. To secure her foot to the base, I sanded back the area of contact with sandpaper and then glued her down with some five minute epoxy. I went ahead and tinted it black so that it blended in with the shoe and the base. Once it had dried, I drove in a couple of screws from the bottom to further secure it to the base.
My electrical skills are very limited, but I have installed a few ceiling fans and pot lights and outlets in my day. I read the instructions that came with the lamp kit and wired up the cord to my leg lamp. I didn't record much of this step as I didn't want to give you bad advice or wrong instructions. Just follow the materials that come with the kit and you should be fine. It's literally just screwing down a couple of wires to a metal plate. Once the wiring was done, I needed to secure the lamp onto the leg. That piece of wood I screwed everything onto in the last clip now needs to be secured to the top. I tape it into place, block the camera with my arm, and proceed to drill four holes for the screws to go through. Once I have it on, I screw in my smart light bulb and test it out. With fingers crossed, nothing explodes, so I must have wired it in correctly. To cover up the screws and the wood base, I thought it would be fun to use some more of those fake leaves to cover it up. For the shade, I just got a cheap Sally costume that I was going to hot glue over the top of. The costume came with a goofy yarn wig and these creepy Sally skin wrist wraps. I decided to put them on and see if I could fully assemble my shade before my circulation was cut off by these skin tight skin wraps. Just barely made it. Once I had it glued up, I stuck it on the top of the lamp and can officially call this build done. And we are finished. Here is the end result. It's a very large prop and I don't want to break it. So I'm gonna put it over there and just put up a pop-up here on the screen so you can see it. It was a pretty fun build to try and figure out with all the different pieces, melding them together and making sure that they're secured was probably the most difficult part. The actual building and modifying was fairly simple, but yeah. I, I understand that you can go out and buy this thing probably in a number of places, but one of the things that I love about Christmas, and I've been doing it for several years, especially now that I have much props, is that I like to build my gifts for my family. Um, it's not only that they're getting something super cool, but it is also that they are getting my time. As you get older, you start to realize that your time is more valuable than the amount of money that you would spend to go buy something. So. I highly encourage you make gifts. Uh, I promise you people will highly appreciate them and it's very hard to let someone down when you're making something from the heart. Um, yeah, maybe you will try and build one of these yourselves and impress your friends with your ability to pull something from here, pull something from here and smash it together and hopefully make something that, that works. Yeah, maybe you'll get some. Yay! And inevitably they're gonna ask you. 
How'd you make that? You can give them one of these, tell them, much props. I'm uh, gonna go find a spot for this, you know, like right in the front window so all my neighbors can see. Peace out. If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and want to see more builds like this one, please consider joining these awesome people listed here with me over on my Patreon to build a bigger, better, more creative community together. Happy holidays, everyone.